World War I had just ended and peace was bestowed upon the United States. Twenty years later, on September 3rd, 1939, Germany had just invaded Poland. War was declared by the Prime Minister of Britain, Neville Chamberlain, and the spark of war had lit the world, and everyone was caught on fire. The two sides consisted of the Allies and the Axis. The Axis consisted of Germany, Italy, and Japan. The Allies consisted of the United States, Britain, France, the Soviet Union, Australia, New Zealand, and India. World War II had taken most of the population of people in America, and the economy had hit rock bottom. And work was also very hard to come by, leaving many with little money to survive and live on with. In 1941, America had joined in the war and fought on the Allies' side. The war had lasted for five years, and America suffered many casualties. The population of America dropped tremendously, and after the war, the economy crumbled and the population was at an all-time low. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese Empire launched an attack on the United States Naval Base in Hawaii. The people of America were caught off guard and during that tragic day, over 2,000 innocent people died. Many of the Americans were outraged and did not want anything to do with the people who had bombed one of their naval bases and killed many people. During that time, nobody wanted to be affiliated with anyone with Japanese ancestry. Many people believed that the Japanese were disloyal and were plotting to do harm against the United States. Some Americans were afraid that the Japanese were plotting to do harm to them or their loved ones. The Japanese were treated terribly and were shown racism and were denied some rights that almost everyone should have. Some even speculated their Japanese neighbors to be spies or saboteurs. Americans treated the Japanese people like garbage and did not want anybody who were of Japanese ancestry to be around them or their families. The American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. Two months after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, ordering all Japanese Americans to evacuate the West Coast with loud use of military forces without a trial or jury. This resulted in the relocation of approximately 120,000 people, many of whom were American citizens. To one of ten internment camps located across the country, traditional family structure was appended within the camp. As American-born children were solely allowed to hold positions of authority, some Japanese-American citizens were allowed to return to the West Coast beginning in 1945. The last camp closed in the March of 1946. What I am about to sign provides for a restitution payment to each of the 60,000 survivors. Japanese surviving Japanese Americans of the 120,000 who were relocated or detained. Yet no payment can make up for those lost years. So what is most important in this bill has less to do with property than with honor. For here we admit a wrong. Here we reaffirm our commitment as a nation to equal justice under the law. On December 7th, 1941, the Empire of Japan initiated an attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor. In the following months, hundreds of thousands of Japanese Americans were rounded up and sent to internment camps under suspicion of disloyalty to the United States. This was motivated by vocal outcries by politicians like Franklin D. Roosevelt, who signed the Executive Order 9066. This order empowered the U.S. Army to designate areas from which any or all persons may be excluded. This was unfair because the 14th Amendment of the American Constitution states that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Later, 10 camps were built to house more than 120,000 Japanese Americans. They only had six days to dispose of their possessions, and residents were forced to sell their belongings for small sums of money. Internment camps were often situated in isolated deserts due to harsh weather. Were surrounded by barbed wire and guard towers. Within the camps, internees were forced to live in one-bedroom apartments with little privacy and constant surveillance. They were given a standard army cot, blankets, and a small heating stove. Despite the harsh living conditions, internees tried to establish a sense of community. They established this by having jobs that allows for them to be paid, just like any other regular job. They had schools and used them to learn while they were interned because education was cared for by many during that time. Hard workers also had jobs and were given paychecks for the jobs that they had done and were proud of their accomplishments and were happy to be self-supporting yet once again.
Many people also took up farming and an internment camp. One would speculate that nothing bad was even happening. In the gardens, they grew many plants, vegetables, and even fruit. Even in the face of persecution, young men still joined the military. Nearly 33,000 Japanese Americans served during World War II because their loyalty was undivided and was given to America, not Japan, many of whom became highly decorated for their valor in battle. Only 35% of the country thought that the Japanese Americans should be allowed home once the war was over. This sentiment kept the camps open for over three years. Many internees were outraged because they believed they should go home. They were given their wish on December 17, 1944, as they were allowed home on that day. The last camp closed on March 1946. On December 17, 1944, the government announced that the Japanese evacuees could return to their homes. When they returned, they found their homes looted and their processions gone. The racism and the cold looks certainly did not stop. They were still treated like garbage and were not liked or admired by anyone in the community. Some services were denied to some Japanese people just because they were Japanese, or what they called Japs during the time. Shortly after they were released from the internment camps, some Japanese people suffered from mental and psychological effects that left them crazy or very ill. She never did re recover. The people that suffered from these effects were left unable to do many things, such as work to provide for their families or stop others from working so that they could be taken care of. Work was also very hard to come by because of their race. Many Japanese were left homeless and with little money to survive. Because they were of Japanese ancestry, no one wanted to help them during their time of crisis and need. It was one of the darkest times for them, as they were left homeless and unable to take care of them or their families. Japanese Americans had also lost their businesses and homes to foreclosure while they were interned in internment camps. In 1988, 43 years after the release of the Japanese from the internment camps, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act that compensated more than 100,000 people of Japanese ancestry who were falsely imprisoned in the internment camps during World War II. The United States government offered a formal apology and $20,000, which is $40,000 as of today, restitution to each of the surviving victims of the false imprisonment. On February 19, 1976, Gerald R. Ford officially resigns the Executive Order 9066. In 1988, 43 years after the release of the Japanese from the internment camps, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act that compensated more than 100,000 people of Japanese ancestry. There were also a few positive impacts that affected the internees in the 1990s. They were richer, more likely to complete college, and work in a high-status job. Like one of many, George Takei was a child of the internment camps smelly, and has become a successful person in the film industry. On, uh, brick walls. They would stagger around and, and, and barf right in front of us. My baby sister, who is now five, uh, five years old, said, Mama, let's go back home, meaning behind those barbed wire fences. We had adjusted to that, and coming home was a horrific, traumatic experience for us kids. The Japanese internment played a large role in the history of the United States. It uprose a conflict between two different races and ended up in one race falsely imprisoned by the other. It was a dark time for both of the people of the United States and the Japanese Americans. Looking back at the huge mistake that had taken place, the United States could have and should have dealt with the problem differently and with more diplomacy. It was said that the Japanese were accused of disloyalty and were planning on sabotaging or spying on the United States. But it was just the opposite and the Japanese Americans showed great loyalty to the United States and were also model citizens. The Japanese internment was not ethically and morally correct. It was a case of false imprisonment.